Is that right yet? So, uh, Alexander? Yeah. You're up. <laughs> it's from the uh, Technique. Yeah. I'm a master's student at Ecal Polytechnique uh, de Montréal under the direction of Mr. Tremblay in collaboration with uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Davaran. So today I'm going to talk to you about seismic behavior of still expressing uh, mid-connections. So as you may know, uh, 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 X-bracings are co commonly used in, in steel buildings. Uh, designers like to, to use uh, these expressing in tension compression, especially when uh, you're choosing HSS cross sections. And when you're using this kind of uh, expressing, one, one brace is continuous and the other one is discontinuous. And then you have to achieve a mid connection detail. Uh, the common mid connection detail is done by inserting it through plate, uh, through the continuous brace, and by inserting and welding plates in the discontinuous brace. And in that case, you're bolting both plates together uh, to get your complete uh, connection. Um, uh, Professor Davaran made uh, some uh, analytic work on that uh, connection and he saw that it, may, it has probably a stability problem. So in 2011, we began a, a, um, an experimental program at the Calpoy Technique to examine the stability um, response of, of these connections. So uh, the presentation is going to go as follows. I'm going to talk about the buckling of connections, then the behavior of them, uh, some tested solutions, and finally I will, I will show you some um, design recommendations. So uh, the experimental program that was conducted was done on full X-bracing uh, systems. Uh, all these braces were designing according to CSA X16 uh, 2009. Uh, they were uh, designed for low ductility brace as well as for uh, moderate ductility. Uh, there were 14 tests done on HSS brace and 3 tests on double angle brace. So on the picture below I'm showing the common type of bolted connections. In the first case uh, we call it a, in a single shear uh, comfort. Duration. There's only one plate inserted in the in the tube, um, but you know this plate, uh, th this connection is eccentric, so you have to take it into account when you're designing it. Um, the, the second uh, connection type is the double shear connections. So there's two plates inserted in the tube, and in that case, the connection um, is concentric. Normally, uh, engineers would prefer the second option, which uh, the concert to be. Uh, uh, to have no stability problem. But what happened in fact when we tested is all the connections experience a stability problem in accepting uh, for the single shear connection in the continuous brace. As you can see the buckling occurred in the brace which is uh, the expected behavior for that, uh, for that system. And all in, in the other case, uh, the buffing occurred in connection. And we saw it for all our, our tests. Uh, so as a result, the ductile element in compression becomes it becomes the connection. It's no more the brace, and all the damage and the fractures will occur uh, in that element. So what is the characteristics of of this phenomenon? There's three major ones. Uh, the first one is that the, the buckling in the connection happens at the lower um, at the lower load, a lower resistance. So this is an example of one of of one uh, of one test uh, where uh, we it, it's a single shear test. So the buckling in the con so the dot line is the continuous brace, and you can see that the buckling occurred in the brace in that case, and in the discontinuous brace of the same specimen, the buckling occurred in the connection and it happened at the lower load. The second observation that, that has been found is that the, the, this phenomenon happens to uh, a lower drift uh, demand. So as you can see, it happened at 0.2% drift in the connection and 0.5% in, in uh, the brakes. 
The third uh, difference is the pause buckling behavior. So in, when it, the buckling occurred in the connection, we have a very sharp decrease uh, suddenly after the, the, the buckling, which we don't see it when, it happen, when it's happening in the brakes. And all of these three uh, characteristics make a, a problem. In fact, the problem is that we're losing stiffness of the brakes, in, in that case it was only in one direction, but if it's uh, buckling occurred in both connections, then we're losing stiffness in both uh, directions. And as a result, if we're expecting this drift uh, when we have the expected behavior, then we can have a, an over drift, a, a, an extra drift demand, and um, because of the buckling of connections. And what would be the consequences is especially for conventional construction, so which were designed for essentially elastic load, uh, it can, uh, we can exceed our design load for all other elements such as beam, columns, connection, diaphragm, foundations, um, and non-structural elements. So I'm going to show you an example so, um, of the load. So the, the, the y-axis is the tension force that I measured in, a, in the, the laboratory. Um, and this line represents the, the design load for all the other elements. So beams, columns, they were designed for this load. Uh, connections of, of the specimen were, were designed for 1.5 CF, which is uh, recommended in the code, in the CSA uh, S16. And depending on the drift that we can, uh, that we really uh, will add, right? uh, all the tension force over that line is, is an exceed uh, for the beams, columns, and connections. And it's the same problem here. All the tension force that is occurring over that line uh, is that the connect brace connections are overloaded. So uh, to, each, to, to try to avoid this buckling, we tested many solutions. Uh, these solutions was first to increase the thickness, uh, the plate thicknesses. Uh, we decided also to add a siphoner. Uh, we add a partially and fully welded shim plates that I will explain here. And also we decided to use double angle welded on the tube. So the first option to increase the, the plate thickness uh, worked very well. We sh we, it showed that if you increase the, 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 the plate uh, thickness connections, uh, you can increase first the, the buckling load, and it's it, it shown on, on the green line, and that, as well as the pulse buckling behavior. But you know, it's we increase the, the plate thickness in that in that case is for only uh, by only three millimeter, and we had a very different behavior. So it's very sensitive. The second option is by stiffening the connections, which is a great idea as you can see on the picture. The pro it worked really, really well to increase the buckling load of these connections, but the problem is that there is a fracture that appeared in the, in the, stif in the stiffener, and in that case, the stiffener is no more uh, effective and the, the connections remain uh, behaves like a, only a single plate. So it, it had a, a very, and also you can see that it had a brittle fair even so it's a, it seems to be on, on a gross area. In fact, it's a net, uh, it's a welded net area. Um, for double shear uh, connections, um, normally a plate is inserted here, uh, which uh, it's, it's in that case, uh, uh, well, we don't have it. <laughs> but uh, normally, we have uh, some plates that are inserted and they're welding by uh, spot weld. <coughs> and the behavior was like this, so it, it was a very poor uh, behavior. So we decided to improve that, that the behavior by uh, weld, by uh, fully welding uh, our uh, shim plates. And, but the, the buckling occurred as well in, in the connection in that case. The, the main difference it, is that it changes the, the location, the plastic inch locations in our connection, which increase, in fact, the, the, pause buckling, the, the buckling moment and as well the pause buckling, because 
And the second option, it, it reduced the, um, the inelastic rotation in, in the plastic hinge. And, and as a comparison, the blue line is the one with a, with a shim that was uh, structurally well, and in, the, in, in black was a specimen with only a partially welded shim. So you can see that it's a, it's a better behavior when we, we welded the shim. <coughs> the final uh, the solution that we test, instead of uh, adding the plate uh, at the end of the HSS, we decided to weld uh, double angles on the HSS. So as it is shown here, and in that case it worked really well. Uh, as you can see, we add the uh, buckling in, in both discontinuous and, and continuous brace because it, it, the inertia uh, of the connection is, is a lot increased. So in that case, uh, the, buck, the, the behavior was uh, the one that was expected. So uh, for the design recommendations, um, until better knowledge, uh, the buckling of connection shall be avoided. And as I mentioned, the reason is because we have a, 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 a lower buckling load. It happen, it's happening at the lower drift, and as well, we have a worse post buckling behavior. Also, um, it can increase the drift, which uh, we don't know exactly how much right now, and that can increase the, the forces to the all secondary elements. Uh, and, and finally, the performance of connections are really sensitive to, to details, so it might not be taken into account uh, in design. Um, so, as I mentioned, the thickness, the presence of shim, the addition of stiffeners, uh, all these parameters uh, change the behavior and <coughs> a lot. So what what now? What can we do? So uh, it's only proposals, as you may know. The the research is not finished yet. But uh, to the two first, I think that the better the best option would be to keep the inertia of the tube until the plastic inch look you expect the plastic inch location that you expected. So if you want to use like this kind of common connection, then you have to to make them really stronger and probably keep the same inertia uh, of the two, which will make very uh, very thick plate. Um, the other option, the third option is a uh, uh, one uh, that has been tested a lot is by field welding the HSS directly on the gusset plate. So in that case, you're keeping the the inertia of the two until the your plastic hinge. And the final uh, option is to use, as I mentioned in the test, uh, in, the, in the presentation, by using uh, like double angle welding on the tube. So in that case you're keeping the inertia and it works very well. And also just to mention that again if you're using double shear uh, plates then you have to put shims in that and not only put, it, put them but to weld it uh, structurally. So uh, with that, uh, thank you very much.